Good morning, folks. Welcome to the Cassandra Terry Morning Show. Cassandra Terry, the mindset coach and founder of Manifesting Miracle Makers, rounded up her LinkedIn family once again. First, we've got Brian Smart, Mr. Content and Dadpreneur. He's striking the perfect balance between raising his youngest daughter and creating masterful content. Next, meet Denise Annalise Spiller, the gig expert and relentless traveler and writer. She turns every gig into an adventure. Then there's Jay Pasqua, the storytelling strategist, a poet and voiceover artist. He's weaving tales that'll make you think, laugh, and maybe even change your perspective. Get ready for a show filled with wisdom, inspiration, and the magic of family. Let's welcome Cassandra Terry and the rest of the fam. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Focus Friday, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Cassandra Terry Morning Show. We are just about to get started. Welcome, Jay. It's always great to have you with us. And I see you guys coming in and already leaving comments, so you are ready to go. Ollie, we got your first comment before we even went live, so we don't know what magic hocus pocus you've got going on this morning, but it's working. It is working. We heard from you right away, so we are excited. Hi, bye, said happy Focus Friday. Uh, Ollie said yay, hugs everyone at hi bye at Cassandra Terry, the manifesting miracle maker, and at Jay. So he is passing the love all around. Amberly, good morning, friend. Right back at you. Uh, Ollie says, Fried Jaylicious. <laughs> uh, focus, focus. And hi, bye said, Love it at Ollie. Ollie says, On fire. And there's our always can count on. Always glad to see right along with Ollie and so many others. Miss Kim Graff is with us. Tanya Crocker Nagel also said good morning. Uh, welcome, welcome. And Tanya Cook. So we, you guys are rolling in. We are excited to be here. We are so happy. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, it's not Friday. It is definitely a Friday situation. It has been a long week. We have accomplished a lot and we're right at that, that point of the week where we can see the weekend coming and we need to make some decisions. What are we going to focus on? If we look back at the week, how did things go? Are there things that we could learn? Are there some things that should we would have liked to have seen differently that we can learn from and adjust in the upcoming week? And what are we going to focus on this weekend? Have we built in any time, any plans for self-care, any times plans to spend with the family? What's going on? What are you, where are you focused? Because where you are focused is where you will create your existence. So make sure that you're focused on the things that bring you joy. You're focused on your abundance and the things that you have, that you are operating from a heart and soul and mind of gratitude and create the space where the things that you can desire, the things that you desire have the opportunity to grow. So um, we've had a lot of different things that we've talked about this week, but we're back kind of to the old format today, Jay. I've, I have a, a quote for us, and it's one that we've looked at before, but it's been quite a few months, um, and it always resonates with me when it goes by. So I thought I'd bring it back, and we would use it to, uh, to uh, seed our conversation today. The direction of your focus is the direction your life will move. Let yourself move towards what is good, valuable, strong, and true. And that's from a motivational speaker, Ralph Morstan. The direction of your focus is the direction your life will move. Let yourself move towards what is good, what is valuable, what is strong, what is true. Remind you of a Bible verse, um, Jay? Every time I read it, I think about a verse. Jay may be frozen. He was having some technical difficulties this morning, so I don't think he's able to respond because he's been in the exact same spot for a minute now. So 
<laughs> so I think it's the technical difficulties, but it caught him with a little smile on his face. So at least it caught him, it caught him in a good spot. So he'll, I'm sure he'll uh, reconnect and get that internet going and join, join us as quickly as he, as he can. And Brian will probably pop in as well. Um, Ali says, what is good for you, not for others? Yeah. I mean, when we do the things that are good for us, then we place ourselves in the position to be able to do good for others. We feel better. We're in a better mindset. We feel fulfilled. And we, from, a, from our abundance, be it whatever resource it is, be it love, right? Be it excitement, be it joy, be it financial, whatever the situation is, when you're giving from a place of abundance, when you have taken care of your basic needs, then you find yourself in a position to where you can do even more for others. So, you know, I think the airlines is the only one that really has had it right historically about putting that on your own mask on first before you try to save somebody else. If you just picture it in all of, all of your most heroic self, Something is going on and the oxygen is dropping and you don't think about yourself. It's just the way you're wired. And it is you are determined that you're going to help as many people as you possibly can. Right. So you start to move through that plane and you you get you whoever's next to you, they get their oxygen mask. Your seatbelts off. You're running through and you are helping as many people as possible. But guess what? Because you never took in oxygen for yourself it won't be very long before you lose consciousness. Once you've lost consciousness, then you are no value to yourself or to anybody else. That's why it's not about being selfish. It's about being selfless and taking care of yourself, getting yourself in the best possible position, because that is the only way that you can truly fulfill your mission in life. Hey, Bree, good morning, sweetheart, Grand Rising. Yeah, Are you headed to school? What, can you tell us what kind of day you're going to have? What kind of day are you going to have today? Great day. A great day. <laughs> yes. So do you know why you're going to have a great day? Because you've already decided that it's going to be a great day. And whatever you decide, that's what you're going to create. So you go create a great day. Okay, Bree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she is so gorgeous. She is such a sweetheart. <laughs> okay, I'm done for the day, y'all. My focus is completely gone. We, uh, is Jay, Jay's still not back, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> oh, you can't see me? Well, oh, you're not moving, but we can hear you. Your 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 uh, video is frozen, but as long we can, but it's frozen in a very nice place. I already said to everybody, <laughs> it, it caught you with a little bit of a smile. You look like you're saying something very, very smart and important. So, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you, so we are good. <laughs> but Brian has completely taken my focus. So let me let me rewind and get it back in gear. Uh, we do have a few comments that have come in. Uh, Tanya said th this weekend for me is about supporting my daughter swimming regional regionals, organization, education, and self-care, showing up for family and also remembering myself. Man, that sounds like a wonderful weekend. There's nothing like being able to see our children doing and flourishing in what excites them. And that excitement pours over right into us. Sometimes we're more excited than they are. And man, when we support our children and their dreams, they will take us places. You and I, I'm getting those swim meets and my, my kids were basketball and track and, and the places we went, the things that we got a chance to do. And then they ended up playing in college. So we followed them through that, that season of their life as well. So different cities all over the world, you know, all over Texas, different states as they competed in the summers and in college. And it's just a wonderful time. And when you have that opportunity, you only have them for a little while where you can really focus on them. And when you know moms, dads getting close to being empty nesters, when you know that you've poured in the things that you needed them to know and the things that you feel like they need in order to be successful in this world. It makes it a little bit easier to let go when it's time for them to spread their wings, right? It, it makes it a little easier. I know the I see so many people when their kids, kids grow up, 
um, just devastated. They're going off to college and my heart's broken or they're getting married and I'm not quite ready to let go. And guys, you know, that's the whole point. We do that work in the beginning so that they are able and capable and excited about that next phase of life. So we have to be at any point in time, those transition periods are times where we really have to check our focus. If we're so focused on them that we've forgotten to create a life for ourselves, then yes, it's kind of devastating when they go off and start to live their own lives. But it's an opportunity to reassess who you are, reassess what it is you want out of the rest of your life and to pour yourself into that so that you can be excited for them. You can continue to support them, but they don't see you sad and upset and they don't feel bad about going, you know, going off to college or moving on with whatever the next phase of their lives are. So just a little sound bite because it's, you know, we're getting close. It's already February. So graduation seasons will be coming up soon. So prepare your hearts and your minds if you're in that season to truly support your kids and not to put that little gray cloud over them because they're worried about how you're going to be when they go off. They're supposed to. You are raising them for a season so that they can go off and become good, productive citizens and raise the next, you know, level, the next uh, uh, generation of, of good, productive citizens, right? So I see. And, and, you know, I don't know, I think I was pretty independent as a kid. And so when my kids were uh, growing up, I enjoyed the different milestones, but I wasn't one of those parents that experienced that. So I'm not necessarily in this, in this conversation, speaking from experience, I've witnessed it, but I was, I was really excited. I was really excited when, when my kids were going off to college and and doing those next things, planning their weddings, seeing the next babies and all that kind of stuff. I never really had that sadness or angst that they were leaving me or that kind of stuff. But I know a lot of people do. And it's a difficult time. And we as humans have difficulties when we go through any type of transition. But just check your focus. What am I focused on? Am I focused on what I'm quote unquote losing? Or am I focused on what I'm about to gain? You're gaining an adult. You're gaining the opportunity to see the fruits of your labor come to fruition, to see your children get their, get strong and, and find their way. And they still need you. They just need you in a little bit of a different, different manner than they did when, you know, when they were this small, like Bree going off to elementary school. <laughs> oh, look, y'all, she's got some friends too. Hey, guys. I hope y'all are getting ready for a great school day. <laughs> The dadpreneur in full effect. Uh, so, uh, so Kim sounds like, uh, let's see, this weekend taking a course Saturday and Sunday to get my life insurance certification in PA, trying something new. Congratulations. That's exciting. I'm in school too, Kim. I'm, I go to school on Monday nights. It's virtual though. Um, for the next six months, working on my uh, life coaching certification. The, 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 uh, the badge that I have is really only recognized within my company. So I wanted to make sure I had something external as well as I continue to do more and more of that. So learning something new is, is fantastic. Congratulations to you. I am very excited for you and can't wait to hear how it all goes. Ollie said, yay, Brian. <laughs> Trina, good morning. I really needed to hear that analogy about the oxygen mask. Currently dealing with that. Yes, ma'am. I know you have been through a lot and you've been the support system for many. Um, it's just kind of the way you put together. So you're going to always do that. Uh, but you can't, you can't lose you in the process, my friend. You definitely have to take care of yourself. Your body is very sensitive. So when you're not taking care of yourself, it screams at you very loudly. And so you just have to listen and start listening closer so that before it screams, you start to take care of yourself so you don't get as, as as ill as you sometimes do. So take good care of you and you will have more energy, more everything to help to continue to take care of everyone else. Sonia says, good morning, everyone. Hello, Sonia. Always good to see you. Uh, Ollie says, super dadpreneur. I think this is to, uh, to Kim. Congratulations. Um, Ollie J is snowy in... Is it snowy in your side? I heard uh, there was a lot of snow again in California. Jay is in um, Alabama. 
Yeah. No, I don't think there's any snow, right, Jay? No snow. Um, but uh, uh, it is it is a little bit cold. Not not too much. I, I say that, and and people from Michigan look are probably going to look at me like, "Oh, you don't know what cold <laughs> is." Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, this island boy here in Alabama thinks it's cold. So you know, take it for what it's worth. But yeah, there's no snow here. Um, if you look behind me, you know, the, the, the foliage is brown and, you know, the, the leaves have fallen. Um, and now we're kind of on the precipice of spring. So, yeah, it, it's it's a little it's a little cold, but no snow. So. No snow. <laughs> I always laugh when people talk. You know, I could be sitting right next to somebody and I'm hot or I'm cold and, and they're they're feeling something differently. So what? It's cold to me. I'm the one who who's shivering and has the goosebumps. I don't understand the comparison, but whatever. We had a we had a good time with my sister in law um, a few years ago. We went to Michigan, and um, we had gone for a graduation, and it was unusually warm there. And it got up to 86 degrees, and it shut the city down. Their their infrastructure stopped working. The traffic lights and things like that stopped working. And so now, when they come to Texas and they talk to us about it not being cold. And we, us not being able to handle the cold, we go, yeah, and you guys can't handle the heat. So there you go. <laughs> it's all relative. It is all relative. Kim says her, her training is virtual also. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Keep our brain growing and going. Absolutely. I think that's a secret to um, staying young is, you know, staying focused on something, continuing to grow and tap into new things, keeping yourself busy, having a purpose, you know, having a purpose. When you are focused on something, it gives you a reason to keep moving forward and having that reason uh, especially as we go through different transitions and things change in our lives. We need to keep some, we have to have a North star, something that's guiding us forward um, all the time. And so congratulations on making that decision for yourself. And I know a lot of people will benefit because you're going to make sure that they have the right coverage and, and are doing the things that they, they need to do to take care of their, fa their families, excuse me. So let's look back at the quote one more time. And um, Jay, I was asking you when you read it, did it remind you of a, of a Bible verse? Because it certainly does for me. The direction of your focus is the direction your life will move. Let yourself move towards what is good, what is valuable, what is strong, and what is true. And that's by Ralph Morstan. And uh, I love this quote because it's one of the quotes that reminds us of the power of our focus and where we're putting our attention, how we're how we are deciding to look at and process our experiences, right? If you're looking at what is good, that's, that's what you're focused on. If you're looking at what is valuable to you, if you're looking at what your strengths are, what's strong in you and around you, and what's true, if those are the things that you are casting your resources on, your time, your energy, your focus, that's what you're going to create, right? You're going to create more of what's good and valuable and strong and true because we are not much more than the, the manifestation of our thoughts. The things that we're thinking about is what we are going to see, feel, experience more of. So you have a lot more control over your day sometimes than you give your, yourself credit for. There's going to be periods in time where the things that are surrounding you just are really you'd really you really wish they were different. Right. But you can process them differently by focusing on what you're getting from that situation, even when it's a tough one. What am I learning in this period? What am I? Oh, I can't believe it's been it's been so long since I've been without a job. I can't believe that my employer let me go. And most you know, that's a very traumatic experience for most people. And if you're not one of those folks where they're they're you know they're coming out the woodworks for you with offer after offer after offer, you have that period where you got to process through those emotions. Just like in when you're mourning, you have to process through those emotions. But you want to get to the point to where you realize that if nothing else, you've been given the gift of time. So in that downtime, what are you going to do with it? Are there new skills like me and Kim? Are you going to take a class? Right? Are you 
Are you going to jump right back into the same field that you were in so that you can quickly get reemployed? Or is there something that's been nagging at you, something that you really wished you had the opportunity to do, but you've been so busy that you just couldn't get to it? Is this the time to refocus and recommit to that? There's only, there's only, there's no right or wrong answer. It's your answer. So you have to stop and think, what is the gift in this period? In this period of unemployment, which no one sees as a gift typically because your, your flow is completely broken. Your confidence can be shaken. Your livelihood is threatened. How am I going to pay all my bills? So you've got all of this stuff swirling around. And this is a real scenario for so many people. But some people thrive through this just like anything else because they, you know what? I've always wanted to write this book. So I'm going to take this time before I jump right back into work. I'm going to take a little bit of time live off this severance, live off a little bit of savings, whatever your plan is. And I'm going to get this project finished. That's been so important to me. And you never know, you know, I really didn't like that job. I complained about it every day. So let me step back for a moment and think about exactly what it is I want to do and see, is there an opportunity now for me to seize that? Can I create that reality for myself? Maybe I don't need the full paycheck of what I was getting before. So maybe I work just a little bit now so that I don't have to tap into savings. And I use that extra time to do what's important to me. I've always wanted to volunteer at this organization. I've always tap in, step back and tap in. When we go through transitions, we have a tendency to, to really get anxious and to make quick decisions. And when we make quick decisions, a lot of times we don't process and really think about what it is that we want. And sometimes we, in not doing that, we miss the opportunity and what the season is bringing. So if you're not as busy as you typically are, maybe your work is seasonal, you know, like people who work on who build homes and things like that. They're really, really busy during the, those warm months and during the winter months. It's feast, you know, it's kind of a feast or famine type thing. During those winter months, there's not as much work. So they know that. So if they're smart like the animals, they're they're packing it away because they know it's going to become a time where, where they go underground. You know, it's time for them to rest. Maybe that's what this season is about. Maybe it's time for you to rest. Maybe it's time for you to, to maybe you're in a very good season and you're and life is flourishing. Are you squirreling away a little bit for the future? Whatever season that you're in, evaluate it, realize what it is, and then prepare yourself for what else may come. So the direction of your focus is the direction your life will move. Let yourself move towards what is good, valuable, strong, and true. All that's saying is where you put your thoughts, where you put your energy, be mindful about that. Put it in the good stuff. Put it in the stuff that whatever you want to create, that's what has to consume your thoughts. Because in, in allowing that to consume your thoughts, that's exactly what you're going to see more of and eventually create for yourself. Kim says, true that, exactly, setting them up to be financially secure all around. Yeah, that's what a good agent will do for you. And we know you're going to rise to the top and be a great one. So, Jay, you've been listening patiently. Um, there's Dr. New. She says, hi, Jay and Cassandra. Hello, Dr. New. Always good to see you. Um, go ahead and take the quote, Jay, or whatever it is you had prepared to share with us this morning. The floor is yours, sir. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, so the quote, I want to focus on the quote for a little bit. Okay. And, and, I, and I, always, <laughs> I always hear the song in my head, and I, I sing it all the time now. Um, when I move, you move. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, and gosh. and it's and it's in the right direction and it's in a positive direction. Um, and it's uh, you know, Ralph Marston, if you if you know of him, mm -hmm. right? Uh man, he's your neighbor, he's in Austin. That's your that, that's your neighbor in that's my in neighbor. Austin. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he started the Daily Motivator and it's just a lot of 
writing and content about motivation. Mm -hmm. um he started i think about 25 years ago maybe maybe 26 now but um you know he's he's always he's he's he paints himself out to be this regular guy right <laughs> but if you hear some of his stories and just some of the experiences he, he's had you know he's not he's he is a little bit above the cut um but really he does try to live his life um, just like anybody else, you know, he mows his yard and he does what he, you know, he goes fishing with the guys sometimes, whatever. Right. <laughs> but, but um, I think that his life can be an example for others. You know, you can be that regular guy and, and still lead an exceptional life. Right. Um, because of that dog, determination that focus and so when you asked me about um a scripture i was thinking about james uh, chapter 1 verse 12 mm -hmm. uh, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test that person will receive the crown of life that the lord has promised to those who love him you know it it really talks about the power of focus and perseverance in the face of trials, right? Just listen to it. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. You know, it's the idea that that perseverance is a virtue that brings blessings. Mm -hmm. It emphasizes the importance of enduring or endurance through difficult times, right? Maintaining faith and staying focused on the promises of God, right? Despite facing trials and challenges and adversity and whatever it is you think that's, that you perceive to be adversity, right? Those who remain steadfast in their commitment to their faith, to God, to that being above themselves, they will ultimately be rewarded with the crown of life. And that that encourages people who have faith, believers to keep their focus on on that eternal reward. And for us, it's the eternal reward promised by God mm -hmm. in the Bible. You know, people who believe in in Christianity and the Bible. And and we can't be swayed or discouraged by temporary setbacks. Right. And I, I think we talked about it a little bit the other day when, you know, if we're looking at where we are currently, right? If it's a huge undertaking and the journey is a little bit rough, right? We're exactly where we need to be because of all the little storms and, and, and hurdles and things we, we had to overcome in the past so that now we, we've taken all of that and now we're here and we should be able to traverse what we're going through right here, right now, as long as we stay focused in what we're trying to do to get to that point where we need to be. Right. So taking all the lessons that we've learned, all the adversity that we've ever experienced for me, when I was going through the trauma after a tornado, you know, it's those little I say little storms, but I've actually survived super typhoons with winds gusting above 150 miles per hour over 24 hours, maybe even a 48 hour period multiple times in my lifetime. But here I am, still here, still sharing my stories as a testament to that faith and that dog determination to get past those adversities, those mm -hmm. hurdles, those storms. And so if we can just persevere, stay focused on the path ahead, we'll get there and we'll get there better than we were, you know, maybe 10 miles ago. Right. 
Right. <laughs> and and we when we realize that the storms in life are building up the strengths that we need for whatever is going to come next. We, we look at the storm a little bit differently. All storms are not made to destroy. Some storms are made to clear out. And, and the strength that you gain from pushing against the wind, working through that storm, that, that, it, that actually ends up being the same wind that propels you forward down the road as you get to the other side. So even in the storm, we can find something to be grateful for. It all depends on what we're focused on what we're focused on, what we're focused on, what we are focused on. Dr. News says, I love that when I move, you move. <laughs> and uh, Dr. New, uh, Ollie sent hugs to you. Chorito, I have not seen you in a while. Good evening to everybody is from Chorito. Same to you. Uh, Ollie says, focus on faith, faith to relationship with Jesus. Tarita says, hello, Dr. New, and hello, Jay and Cassandra. Hello, hello, hello. Franny, I'm not sure if you are still here, but I got excited when I see I, I saw the thumbs up from you because it has been so long. Uh, Franny, um, I primarily, I, she's on uh, Facebook, and she talk about the ability to focus and to ground yourself and to to find your path. She is absolutely amazing. Somebody that I worked with um, last year and she really helped me shake shake loose some of the, the stuff that was still hanging around and, and, and I was bumping my head against. So uh, absolutely great to see you, Franny, as well. So Brian, I think people aren't even realizing that you're here because they don't see your picture. But y'all, Brian is with us as well. And he had the uh, had the camera on a little while ago. He was actually dropping his daughter off at school and we got a, uh, had a conversation with her and got to see some of her classmates. Brian, are you in a position where you can unmute? Yeah, I'm unmuted. I, uh, I'm listening. It had a camera on driving. Move the car. So I yeah, you're uh, okay. No problem. Your uh, your audio is a little little uh, sketchy. Always Dr. New make says, sure. Hi, Brian. Cool. My daughter always makes sure. Hey, Doctor New. My daughter always makes sure that uh, whoever is driving, they have both hands on the wheel. So that's that's kind of where it started from. She wouldn't she wouldn't let me hold the phone. She's like, Dad, you got to have both hands on the wheel. You got to focus. <laughs> and that's what I, I was thinking about when y'all were saying, y'all, yeah, yeah, y'all talking about focus. And that's what she, you know, if you don't want to, if you don't want to cause any undue stress, you have to focus. Because I don't care how focused you are in, in actuality, the storms are coming anyway. You can be as focused as you want to be. You could be driven tunnel vision. That's not going to stop what's, what's taking place. You know, you're still going to have to go through a storm. I don't care. Life keeps on life. Everything keeps on coming and there's nothing you can do about it. So when you when you think about focus, you were saying focus. So not that you would prevent it from happening, but that when it does happen, if it happens, you're ready. You got both hands on the wheel. You paying attention. You're looking straight ahead. Anything that comes your way, you're in a position now to be able to respond and possibly come out victorious, right? People talk about the uh, the opportunities that are available in failure, but those opportunities are not guaranteed. They are seeds, right? You have to do something. You have to focus. You have to keep on your strategy, on your plan in order to make that thing happen, in order to make that opportunity real. So mm -hmm. when I think about focus, I'm, 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 I'm going back to going back to my favorite person in the whole world when she said, dad, you got to focus. And then she, she threw in with dad, you know, you're never moving too fast. You're always going, you're always going slow. I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm going slow so that when things come about, I can respond. I have time to respond. I'm planning this out. She's like, oh yeah, I get you. She said, well, why are we running late? I said, that was all part of the plan. <laughs> all part of the plan. Focus is, focus, is, focus is Brianna for me. She'll make, yeah, she'll make me focus. 
she makes me focus. I have to focus. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. New says, hi, Brian. Uh, Ollie said, wow, Jay, persevere and not peer severe. Uh, Charito said, good evening, dears. Nice topic. So uh, worthy to be listened to. I'm glad that it's resonating with you, Charito. Dr. New says, she's smart, Brian. You got to focus. And she also said, what you focus, you will see. Be present. And Ali said, plant the seed. Uh, failure is just a redirection to a path you are not supposed to be on and uh, to get to the to be in the right path. That's also Dr. New. And uh, Tanya Crocker-Nagel, Dr. Du, is saying hello to you as well. So we've got a good engaged audience uh, today that are dropping gems and the conversation is resonating with them. So we so appreciate that. Um, but yeah, focus. And, and I really like um, what Dr. New said that failure is uh, just a redirection to a path you're not supposed to be on uh, and be in the right path. Uh, we had one of our execs in town yesterday and somebody asked him about the biggest, I forgot exactly how she phrased it, setback, I think she said. What was the biggest setback he had ever experienced in his career um, and how, you know, looking back on it now, you know, how had it, how had it affected him? And he said, there's a lot of disappointments that I can think of. But when I really think about the things that I've experienced, were they really setbacks? Were they setbacks or were they there to redirect me? or to teach me something, to slow me down, to speed me up. There was something, he talked about a job that he wanted to get and he thought he was the best person for it and someone else got it. And he was really upset about it. And then when he spoke to the manager about it, the man, you're not quite ready yet. Here's the additional skills that you should, you need. And then directed him to go and work for the guy that he hired instead of him. And so that's a real humbling moment it felt like a setback. He felt frustrated. But he said the very first conversation he had with that guy, the new the guy who got the job that he wanted, he knew he was in the right place. He knew he was connected with the right person. And they both went on to work together and to plan and to both keep moving forward uh, within their careers. And they helped each other with the next steps. And he eventually, you know, he was the next person who got that job when that person moved on to their to their next role. So what appears to be a setback in the moment is the thing that's very that's preparing you for what's meant for you. And when we realize that, we we can we are that there's some great lesson that's going to come for when you look back at your life, the times where you were the most upset, the most frustrated, where things seemed the most out of control, and you look back on it and looking back, for one, they typically don't feel as big of a deal as they did when we were in the middle of it. But you also can see what you've gained from that experience. I often talk about my grandmother when I think about this because that was the losing her was the most devastating experience that I had. I was only 18. I was getting ready to go to college and she was ill. One, if she had still been there, I wouldn't have left for college. I would have rewritten my plans. I would have quickly gotten into a school close by home so that I could stay and help, you know, and be around her while she was sick. So, so, so I know that that, that was one thing. And two, she was really suffering. She was in a lot of pain and I could have selfishly wanted her to hang on, but I also didn't want to see her hurting like that. So it's all depend. you know, I, I'll never forget. I was so afraid. I mean, physically shaking, afraid of the day of her service. And before it began, they, they had the family come in and they allowed us to see her um, first. I was so fearful that I didn't think I was going to be able to walk all the way up to where she was laying. And, and I just kind of hung back, hung back, hung back. I didn't know if I was going to run out the room. I didn't know if I was going to faint. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I didn't think it was going to be good. I was just overcome with grief and fear and all sorts of stuff. And when I finally allowed myself to see her, the peace that I saw on her face, it took everything just melted away. 
in that moment, immediately I got the relief that I needed because the very first thing that hit me is, oh, mama's not hurting anymore. And I saw this peace on her face. She just, I hadn't seen that in so long. You can't look peaceful in your face when you're doubled over in pain. And she had an aggressive cancer that was that um, re, that caused her not to be able to eat. Um, we would she she liked the corn on the cob from Church's chicken, and she had gotten so ill that she would just eat two or three, four, just the, the kernels. She couldn't even she didn't couldn't eat an ear of corn. She would just pluck a few kernels off and eat that because her stomach was filled with that cancer. And so seeing her for months, you know, in pain and wasting away like that. There was a part of me that still wanted her physical being. But when I saw her, when she had transitioned and made it to the other side, had gone and gotten her reward, and I saw that peace on her face, it did so much for me. It changed my focus in the in an instant. My focus went away from what I was losing to what she had gained, rest, peace, reward, no more suffering. Immediately I felt better. Was it still hard to get through the actual service? Absolutely, especially when they closed the top. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard. Of course, I'm still, I still miss her physical presence. She never got to meet my kids, never got to see me graduate, not on this side. She was there for all of that stuff. And she showed she has made her presence known many times throughout the years. But because I'm I'll be 56 in April. I was 18. I turned 18 about three months after she died. So I wasn't even quite 18 yet. The, my whole life ahead of me. And I couldn't imagine it without her. And thank God I didn't have to live a day without her because she has made her presence known through how I bring up my children, through how I see the world, through my faith and my connection with God. I got that from her and my and my other grandmother and my great grandmother. I was fortunate enough to, to have a great grandmother. I actually have a picture of her holding my firstborn. She outlived all of her children except for one. So to see my grandmother go was in my mind at the time, the most horrible thing ever. And I look at it now through the lens of an adult, you know, not a scared kid trying to figure out the rest of their life, but as an adult and as a mom and as a daughter, you know, and I, and I see what a pivotal point that was in my life. Her job was done. Her final assignment was to take care of me and my sister. She did that. I was about to be 18. My sister was about to be 17. She had one more year of high school. I was going into college. My parents were there and able for us, you know, to take care of us. She had done her job. And that was a period of transition, not only for her, but for me. And in her leaving when she did, that allowed me to start the rest of my life. There's no way I would have been able to do it knowing that she was still there sick. So I can look back on it and some people say, you don't know that that it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And we all have to learn that. I was thinking that the other night of uh, Saturday morning, uh, Jay, when we were on your show, uh, Storytime with Jay and Friends, and you were talking about the person who had written about people's profiles changing and, and seeing that as inauthentic or whatever, just their lens. There's nothing you're going to say. There's nothing anyone else is going to say or do that's going to change their point of view. Their growth and evolution is the only thing that can do that. Therefore, wish them well. Move on. Their point is just their point of view has nothing to do with you or anything that you or anybody else has done. And when we learn that and we don't focus on other people's stuff because we can't we can't ever see all the stuff that's underneath it. So for, for a person to have the point of view that they have, they have been through some stuff. They've lived some, through some things and, and it's come to this point to where they're showing up however they're showing up. All we see is the result. We don't know how they got to be as happy as they are, as angry as they are, as whatever the case may be. We don't know. We just see the results. So when people show up and they're strong in their point of view and they're throwing their stuff, dodge it and keep moving. 
It's, it's of no real value to you unless you give it value, unless you decide to focus on it. And so, I, you know, I didn't I didn't know my grandma was going to come up today, but hey, mama. So she she um, she comes up when she comes up and it's always with a smile in, in this season of my life. But I do know that she poured everything in me that she had to prepare me to live my life without her physical presence and what a life it's been up to this point ups and downs, ins and outs, but more good days than bad days. And because of what she taught me and because she connected me to God, I've been able to traverse whatever has come up. And so I get to be grateful for the um, 70 years that she was here, right? I get to be grateful for what she poured into me and my sister. And I, and I pray that the life I lived to this point and will continue to live honors that sacrifice that she made to raise a couple of kids when she should be, you know, drinking her coffee on the porch. She she extended her her mama time another almost 18 years by taking care of me and my sister. And so there's all this gratitude that I feel now and and joy and happiness and remembering that has taken the place of the grief and the, you know, the missing, the physical presence and all that stuff. It's not nearly as big as the gratitude and the joy and the, and the remembering. So I, I pray that whenever you're going through any storm, that you find the gift in that storm and you can look back and some of the angst of the storm itself, some of those bad feelings about the situation start to melt away as you realize what you've gained from it. That's what focus will do for you. Yeah. All right. I've said more than enough. So <laughs> go ahead, Jay. No, I was just thinking about, uh, you know, a couple of things that, that Brian said and the two words that come up all the time when I hear him talk about focus is that definite objective. Yes. You know, <laughs> and so if you have that definite objective in mind, then you're definitely <laughs> going to be focused on it. And so that's what I'm thinking. That's what I think about, um, you know, when I when when I hear Brian talk about it. A um, couple of things that you said also just kind of resonated with me. You know, I my grandma, uh, my mom's mom really. Uh, helped to raise me as a, as a child. And so a lot of her thoughts and her insights as, as my grandmother really come through a lot of times. And my mom took up a lot of her teachings and her wisdom as well. So it all comes to me. Um, and even though, you know, my father was, was, he wasn't, you know, he, he was always around, uh, but he was always working. You know, for us, um, you know, I, the, the men in the Pasqua household, um, there were there were three of us, and then my youngest brother came in later in 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 time. But the four of us all together as men in that ho household, we held our mother and grandmother in high regard because of everything that they taught us and and my my wife and my brothers their 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 wives and significant others they they always say you know your mama raised you all right <laughs> um, and, and 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 i really attribute that to the the hard lessons that that we learned the stubbornness that we had from our dad <laughs> <laughs> but that gentle touch and that nurturing voice of reason um through my mom and you know my grandmother was uh, wasn't wasn't like everybody else to me um first off on guam a lot of the grandmothers their names were mostly Spanish names that were passed down from generation to generation, you know, the mm -hmm. Rosarios, the, the Marias, you know, the Glorias, right? All of those names. And my grandma's name was Bessie. <laughs> what? In the middle of the Western Pacific, there's this little old lady on Guam and her name is Bessie. Um, but, you know, so she, 
<laughs> so right away, she's different. Just in her name alone. Sound like she should um, be my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> right. But she was great. And, um, but she, she, because of World War II, she had, she only had a third grade education. And, but that didn't stop her from surviving, from living, from nurturing 12 children. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this to me is a testament to just that time and that era and what they came through. And, and so that's what I lean on. And that's what I leaned on after the situation I experienced after World War, uh, after World War II, I'm not that old, um, after the, after, after my, after my trauma from the tornado, I looked at what the story she shared with me about her trauma after World War II and what she had to, to endure um, to get back on her feet because the entire island had to get back on. So is that why you say your DNA, Jay? Yeah. Yeah. My grandparents, not just my grandmother from my mom's side, but my grandparents, my grandfather, who is a uh, Filipino, um, you know, he migrated to Guam through Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He was actually an indentured servant and worked on a plantation. Wow. Yeah. You know, I think my story should be a Southern story, but <laughs> that's why you're so connected to us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my grandma's name is Bessie. My my grandfather worked on a plantation. You know, yep. I, it, it's crazy, just these intersections. But the yeah, the faith in the DNA, the faith really comes from my grandmother and uh, Bessie because of that situation and and all the things that she endured. You know, um, being an adult, being a, a mother, being a grandmother, um, all of that. And then uh, my grandmother on my my father's side, mm -hmm. you know, um, they also were uh, in concentration camps, met my grandfather after the war. And so all of their stories. Right. And this is why stories are important to me, helped to bring me through some of the, my darkest times um, and some of the stories that my mom shared with me and what helped her through her time, right. Mm -hmm. um, of, of struggle and, and, you know, uh, maybe transformation from, from being uh, a young teen to being, being a mom and, and being an adult and what that was like. So all of those things, these are all the things that help propel us and help us focus if we choose to look and see and feel with our hearts and minds. And it'll take us to untold places that we may ne never have even imagined. Because I hear your story about the change in trajectory. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I was going to be in the travel industry. Right. I, I said this one one time, you know, I told the story once, but really, if it if I wasn't rejected mm -hmm. by that travel industry behemoth at the time, I would have never have entered into journalism and I would have never become the storyteller I am today. So. We are, and I, <laughs> I heard this many, many years ago from Oprah Winfrey. We are exactly where we need to be. Exactly. Whether we, need, whether we realize it or not. Yes. And that's where focus comes in. That's where you will get that realization. If you re just take a little bit of time to look deeper. So that was just something I, I I heard in the conversation. So you and I have to sync up. I started working on a book many, many years ago, probably in my 20s, many years ago. And it was too hard to write. Um, but some of the intersections that we talked about is, is um, some of what the book is about. It's a lot of the different things that I've been through. Um, 
And the fact is I've been through them. They are behind me. I'm on the other side of them and life is good. And that's the message I want to get out to somebody who might be going through that or something, you know, those things are something similar. Because if I actually laid it out, it wouldn't, I think a lot of people wouldn't believe me because it's like some of those things, if one, you know, one of them could completely devastate your life and to know that I've experienced and survived and thrived through many of them, several different traumatic experiences. Um, people are like, why are you so happy? Why are you smiling? Because I got through them. I learned a lot of stuff along the way. I'm not still there anymore. Life is good. And I, and I think, you know, people need to hear that. And then as you were talking about those intersections, I just found, find it amazing that in your history, we hear black history. We hear Jewish history. We hear the history of the islands. We hear there's so much. And that says to me that if we take the time to look, we're more alike than we are different. I don't care what bucket you drop yourself in. I don't care what flag you wave, what titles are that you uh, stand on, how you categorize yourself. If you really start to look, you're going to find more commonality than not. The problem is we don't look. We focus on what's, uh, it's obvious that you're male and I'm female, right? So, so we can focus on the differences. Or we can focus on the fact that you ended up in a little town in Alabama where my grandfather was born. There's some coming out. There's something amazing about that. I'd never heard anybody ever even say that name except for my mother. And that's where you are, right? Where the, the, the portion of my family history that was lost, that's where you, you're there, where that part of my family was born. That's exciting, you know? There's so much. And I think all of us have those intersections. And if we could just determine that we're not going to give so much focus to the differences, but we're going to look and build off of our commonalities in this human experience, we immediately make the world a better place. Immediately. Immediately. And don't forget, the one traumatic experience happened on, a on my day. birthday, <laughs> on my birthday, yeah, his, the, his his tornado happened on my birthday. He could look at that in two different ways. You know, I don't want to remember the day that all this happened, and I'm not celebrating your birthday. That's like celebrating my storm. You know, there it all depends on how you decide to process and focus. We see that as another reason to believe that we're supposed to be working together, that we are supposed to be connected, that we are in alignment. We could look at it as my birthday is a bad, that's a bad omen. You need to stay away from that woman. It all depends on how you process and how you, how you look at things, look at the bigger picture. And it's, it's amazing how much overlap there is, how much intersection there is between our lives. And it's exciting. But we've had quite a few, we had quite a few comments that have come through since you and I've been yak, yak, yakking. Uh, Ollie says from fail to sail. I like that. I like that because when you think about a sail, you think about somewhat, you know, you, you, you can see the ship. You see the big white sail and the wind is propelling it forward. That's a whole different picture than what you think about in those moments where you feel like you're failing. But they're preparing you to get that sail up and to be propelled forward. I love it. Dr. New says everything has a lesson and you just got to be present and tune in to know what it is or else you will get that same lesson again if you haven't learned it yet. Ooh, lady, you said a mouthful. You said two mouthfuls. You are so <laughs> right. Either you are going to learn the lesson or you're going to repeat the experience. Those are the only two choices. So if you want to circumvent how often you go through the same thing over and over again, stop, tap in, ask yourself, what am I to learn from this experience? Find that lesson and watch that experience go away. You'll get propelled forward. Some other stuff's coming because we never stop learning, but that particular experience will vanish, will vanish from your life. It's going to evaporate because you've taken the lesson from it. And now you get to move forward wiser, more informed, ready to take that lesson into whatever's coming next. 
That right there is a whole room by itself, Dr. New. Thank you for that comment. Adversity and challenges are the things that can, can and will ignite passion and purpose in all that you do. Absolutely. That was also Dr. New. Um, Ali says, thanks for sharing uh, such a vulnerable story. You are welcome. Tanya says, Can thank, uh, Cassandra, thank you for sharing about your grandmother. I went through similar last week and haven't yet turned my mind to be able to see the other side of the situation. Tanya, you're talking about a week ago. I'm talking about 30 years ago. It's a process. Allow yourself Give yourself the space and the grace to go through your experience, your process, the way you need to go through it. Don't let anybody rush you. Don't rush yourself. Don't put any shoulds on it. I should this and I should that. No, you just are. And right now your heart is wide open because that's what loss does for it to us. It shakes us up. It peels back the skin and it puts us in our most vulnerable place. In that place, just take good care of yourself. And the rest will, in time, in time, as the tears begin to dry up a bit, they'll be replaced with precious memories that'll bring a smile. Sometimes you smile and you cry at the same time. I was almost tearful a few minutes ago. My grandmother has been gone, y'all, since 1986. And I was almost in tears just talking about it. So, you know, it never goes away, the human experience part of it. But it just gets easier because over time it starts to you start to see those moments and the things that you've shared and 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 there's more smiles than tears. So our heart goes out to you as you go through uh, the loss that you're suffering. We send you peace and joy and light, but give yourself time, space, grace to go through it how you need to go through it to come out whole on the other end. It is a process. Um, Ali. She's there and she's hugging you from the other side of the mirror. Absolutely, she is. Don't say anything. Don't do anything. Don't be anything. That's if you want to avoid any critic. Yeah, if you're trying to, that must have been when we were talking about Jay, the person who said whatever they said about the profiles and all that kind of stuff. The only way, and even that wouldn't work because if you don't do anything, you don't say anything, you, you don't be anything, then they'll say that. That person just wasted their life. They never never did a thing. You will never please everybody. That's why you need to turn inward. You need to connect with your higher power. You need to understand what your mission is, why you are here and experiencing this thing called life. What are you to do with this gift? And when you are clear about that, all that noise falls away because you're on a mission. You have a purpose. You're trying to get something done. And all that other stuff is just background noise. Uh, the first name of my grandmother was Minnie. She was Minnie Lee Swinigan. Let's see. A beautiful movie to watch when Marnie was there. Lots of emotions and on my side. Yes, that was a great movie. Uh, Charito says, "From for me, failure, although it leaves a bitter taste, it's what makes success sweet. Oh, I like this. Um, night is what makes a day enjoyable because without night, what will we do? with the 24 hours of day in our lifetime, we go crazy. <laughs> so yes, it's it's that opposite experience that makes the other one so good. We wouldn't even recognize day and night, you know, day if there was no night. We wouldn't recognize sweet if there was no bitter, right? So that's that's just the way it goes. Everything has the opposite side of the coin. So that's a great, great share, Chirito. Thank you for that. Ollie says, one of my best memories of my grandma was when she took a wounded bird and repaired its wings. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And he says 12. Wow. So I think he's responding to your the size of your family, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just on, uh, uh, on my mother's side. On my father's side, there's 11. Yeah. Those, would, those would be some big family reunions. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. We we had one uh, many, many years ago. And, it, you know, a lot of us had the J in the front of our names. And when we got together, the elders were confused. <laughs> Jay, Jesse, Joshua. You know who you are. Come here. You know I'm talking to you. You see me looking at you. <laughs> yeah. You know who I'm talking to. Shut up. Come here. I'm not officially an elder yet, but I I already do that. I already <laughs> do that to my kids. And they laugh. They're like, Mom, you still can't, you still don't get our name straight, but I'm looking at you. You know I'm talking to you. So just <laughs> just 
help help an old lady out. <laughs> <laughs> right. And let's see. Uh, Charito says Bessie is a nice and unique name, Jay. And Ollie said yes. That's that's the gist of our audio session last night with Jay and Yadisharia. Yeah. Okay. How do you say that name? Yeah, Disharvi. <laughs> as far as I can, I can tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, Ali says, unite and ignite each other. Absolutely. And then he said, Cassandra is indeed an amazing storm. <laughs> ah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Ali. And Tanya says, yes, it's a process, but hearing the flip side is perfect for me today. Now I know why my grandmother came up, Tanya. She came up for you. I couldn't have known what you were going through because it came out of left field. I had no intention. Of, of talking about that today, but it just came up and it just flowed out in the conversation. And that is our prayer before we hit go live is that we're a vessel and that what someone needs to hear flows through us. It's not just what we think and what we want to talk about, but that we're opening ourselves up to be a vessel for the right messages to flow for someone to get what they need. And to know that you are the recipient of that today, Tanya, is just confirmation for us that our prayers are working and that we're doing the right thing. And, and you know, God bless you as you go through your, your this period in your life. And I really appreciate you showing up and not just getting what you need, putting your oxygen mask on, but being thoughtful enough to provide a little oxygen for us as well. I think that makes you an absolutely amazing person. Uh, Lisa, Lisa says we need to be in a place where we are open and ready to receive those lessons. Sometimes our grief and trauma prevent us from hearing that message, but that's okay. It will happen when it needs to happen. Absolutely. Ali sends you hugs, Sharito. Um, and Lisa says, love that message. Dr. New couldn't agree more. Um, and Ali says, happy Jamily. Uh, those hearts are received, Tanya. Thank you so much. And Ali says channeling. So what a day. Yeah, what a right. day. I All think, right. yeah, I think what needs to be said has been said. Uh, Tanya is confirmation of that. Uh, the verse that I was thinking of, I want to share that with you guys. And then we're going to go ahead and call it a day. Um, hopefully you guys can join Jay tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central for story time with Jay and friends. It's a magical time. He brings in music from the island, so he opens it with music. So you're already in a good mood Saturday morning with that nice island music. Sometimes he brings in some of the works that he's had published or things that he's written, and he'll do them in his native tongue first tomorrow. Did I get it right? Yeah. And then and then he will um, read it, re repeat it in English so we understand. Um, and then he has those the voices, the different characters that live inside of his head. And they show up. They show up. And, and it's hard to realize that there's not multiple people on stage at that point. That it's just him cycling through those different, um, those different characters. A gifted man who in that hour, hour and a half, shares his gifts with us in, in many different ways. It's amazing. So if you guys can join him, um, I'm always there. Uh, LinkedIn Live tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central, story time with Jay and friends. You will not regret getting your Saturday morning. Uh, Ollie said, Uncle Bones. Uh-oh, <laughs> Uncle Bones. Is he, is he anywhere around, Jay? <laughs> Sure. Let, let, let's let's have him come uh, come to the porch. Hold on a sec. Uh, half a day, uh, everybody. This is uh, half a day, Uncle Bones. It's so good to hear from you. Half a day. Oh uh, wow! You speak good Samoro. Very good. Very good. I've been practicing. I'm... I love Jay, and he taught us that one. <laughs> very good. I like it. Like you know, it makes me feel at home, especially here in Alabama, where it's very cold. My, you know, my uh, my bones cannot handle this. So I don't know if I'll be Uncle Bones today. I think I'm going to be Uncle Blanket. 
<laughs> well, Uncle Bones, whenever you show up, it's like having a warm blanket. You're just like a big old hug. And we are always so excited when we get a chance to hear from you. But we don't want, I hope you're inside. We don't want you to be cold. Uh, no, uh, Jay brought me outside because he wanted me to talk to you. But I'm going to go back inside. Okay. Love you. Goodbye. Love you too, Uncle Bones. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> So that's just a taste, guys, of the many talents of Jay Pasquale, the storytelling strategist. Uh, Lisa says, uh, looking forward to story time with Jay Pasquale. The island living and mindset resonates with me so much. Ali says, you're the Pavarotti of storytelling. Um, and he says, Uncle Ben's. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for, for bringing Uncle Bones and introducing him to folks who haven't had a chance to meet him yet. So just a little preview of the things that are happening on Saturday morning. So you guys, if you can tune in at 9 a.m. Central, please do. We will be there um, on LinkedIn Live. And um, LinkedIn, it's an audio room, actually, his uh, audio room. So I wanted to bring the, the, the scripture that was I was thinking of this morning is Philippians 4 and 8. Okay. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. By mm. definition, by biblical definition, mm. if you want to be virtuous, if you want your virtue and your praise to go up, change your focus. Focus on the goodness in your life. Focus on the things that are working. Focus on the things that you've been blessed with. Focus on the people that pour into you. Focus on the blessings of your life and you will have a more virtuous life and more things to be, to praise about. Your joy will increase. Your love will increase. The, the goodness in your life will increase because that is where your focus lies. So that's how we are going to end it today. Thank you guys so much for spending um, even some extra time with us. We will be here tomorrow morning for uh, story time with Jay and friends. Dr. News says, yes, yes, yeah, Cassandra. So I think she likes that verse as well. So we will see you all tomorrow morning. And then we will be back um, with the Cassandra Terry morning show uh, Tuesday morning at 7.15 a.m. Central. One last footnote on six at 6 a.m. Central every Monday morning. Um, I'm on Motivation Monday with um, Eric uh, and friends. So you can catch me five days, no, six days a week <laughs> on social media in, in one room or another. So you guys follow us if you're not already following. Turn the notifications on so you know when we go live. And we look forward to spending more and more time with you in 2024. So you guys have a great weekend. Take care of yourself and focus on what is good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, what did Trito say? I think we've got one more comment coming in. And she says, where'd it go? One second here. I lost it. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Oh, she said good night. Good night. Peace, Cassie. Join us on the podcast. And Cassandra's everything. Yeah, I'm like a bad penny, Ollie. I just keep popping up. Reach out to Cassandra or any one of the Fam Five on their LinkedIn profiles. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day, everyone. See you tomorrow morning.